So now that we finished up the asset side of the balance sheet, we're going to move over to the liabilities. So we're going to talk about current liabilities in this chapter. We'll talk, deal with long-term liabilities in chapter 12 and then finish up the balance sheet with the stockholders equity section in chapter 13. So first of all, let's talk about for liabilities, current liabilities of a known Remember, a current liability is a liability that we expect to have to pay off within the next year. A liability itself, though, is a debt that we owe to a creditor. Usually it's money we owe, although it doesn't have to be money. It could be that we owe services or uh, a good to a customer. In that case, the customer is also the creditor. All liabilities, be they current or long term, have three main characteristics. Number one, they occurred as the result of a past transaction. So something has happened in the past that causes us to have a present obligation for a future payment. So something has already happened that means we owe someone in the future. The other key here is that they are unavoidable. So it's not something that we can get out of. So kind of a, a the famous example that's given is example, let's say that you um, pledge to give money to a charity. Okay, um, you've said that you would give this money. You didn't actually sign anything. You're not legally obligated to give the money. You may feel you are morally obligated, but you're not legally obligated to give the money. So if you don't give the money to this charity that you had said you would, that's not a liability. Okay. Um, now, if you had signed something and promised it, then that may be a different story. But if you just said, for example, your church may send out a, a thing and saying, kind of let us know what you're going to donate next year. And then, you know, COVID-19 happens and you lose your job and you're unable to make your payments. The church can't come after you. You aren't legally obligated to make that. That's just what you thought. So that's not a liability. A liability is something that you can't get out of. So again, a current liability has to be paid within one year. I'm missing a word there that should say must be paid within one year. And long-term liabilities don't have to be paid within one year. We're gonna, we are going to have to pay them, but they're due more than a year from now. Some common current liabilities, accounts payable, unearned revenue we've already talked about. Remember, that's money when... Um, that, excuse me, that's not money. That is when a customer has paid us for a good or service that we have not provided yet. So we have a debt to them. We owe them that good or service. Um, we've talked about interest payable. We'll talk about interest some more in this chapter. Salaries payable, wages payable, utilities payable, sales tax payable. We haven't really talked about sales tax much up until this point, although we did address it a little bit in chapter five. But remember, if we collect sales tax, we don't get to keep that money. That has to be remitted to the state and local government. So that's automatically a liability. You could also have a short-term note payable, a note payable that's a year or less. Otherwise, notes payable are generally considered long-term. Mortgages, long-term. Bonds are typically long-term. We're going to talk about bonds a whole lot more in Chapter 12. So for right now, all I really want you to know is they are a long-term liability. So let's look at a sales tax example. So here we're told that uh, our state charges 6% sales tax and we sell something for $10,000. And so 6% of 10,000 means that we're actually going to collect from the customer 10,600. So we're gonna collect the $10,000 sales price plus the $600 of sales tax. So we're going to debit cash for 10,600. Notice that we're only crediting revenue for the 10,000 that's the amount of the sales price and then the other 600 that's that sales tax payable that's that liability that we owe now to the state government so sales tax is a, a liability we collect it on behalf of the customers and then we turn around and remit it to our state and local governments. So then when we do pay the tax, we will debit the liability to reduce it. Remember liabilities have a normal credit balance. So when I've paid it, I will debit the liability and I'll credit cash. 
Now, unearned revenue we've talked about. Again, this is when we collect money from a customer in advance, and now we owe them a good or service. You may also hear this called deferred revenue. So here we're told on May 21st, we collected $900 for our customer, and we started work that day. So on the day we collected the money, we debited cash, and we credited the liability unearned revenue. Remember, liabilities have a normal credit balance. So we're increasing the liability account. So here we're told that during May, we did one third of the work. We started on May 21st for a 30 day contract. So by May 31st, we've done one third of the contract. So if you remember, unearned revenue is sitting here with a credit balance of $900. Since I've done one third of the work, I've earned a third of this revenue. So I want to reduce the liability by one third and credit the revenue account to show that I have earned it. So this was a journal entry we did way back in chapter three. So now I'm going to debit unearned revenue for 300 to show, hey, look, now I only owe you $600 of services and I've credited revenue to show that I've earned that. A short term note payable and again is a debt that would be within 12 months or less. So maybe we borrowed some money from the bank and we, it was only for a short term note. We're going to pay it back within a year. So here we're told that we borrowed $10,000 from First Street Bank at 6% interest for five months. On November 1st is when we got the $10,000. So on November 1st, when we collect the money, we will debit cash and credit note payable. Now this note payable would be listed as a current liability because it's due within the next 12 months. Okay. Now remember in our scenarios, until we get to chapter 12, we're not making monthly payments. So we're not gonna make monthly payments on this 10,000, it's just in five months. We're gonna go in and pay all 10,000 plus all of the interest. So on December 31st, though, I have to go in and do my adjusting entries. And remember, we did this back in chapter three. So I'm going, I know that I owe the 10,000 and I already have the 10,000 in my note payable account up here. But I also know that I owe interest on this. So remember our formula for interest we learned is interest is equal to principal times rate times time, where time has to be expressed in terms of a year. So in this problem, my principal is the 10,000. My interest is 6% or 0 0.06. And time is how much time has passed. So at this point, December 31st, it's been two months since I borrowed the money. So it's been all of November and all of December. So I would want to multiply this by two twelfths. So when I crunch those numbers out, I've already got it done on the slide here, so let me just erase this. We know that we owe $100, so we would debit interest expense, credit interest payable for $100. So here I have another current liability now of interest payable for $100 to show that this is how much interest I owe. Remember the interest is kept in a separate account from the principal of the note. So when I get to the end of the five months, so this would be at the end of March or April 1st when I'm paying the loan back. Currently, I'm sitting here with note payable, has a $10,000 credit balance. Interest payable has a $100 credit balance. This is for two months of interest. The last three months of interest is $150. And we get that by saying 10,000 times 6% times 3 twelfths is 150. So the total interest that we owe on this loan is $250. So when it's time to pay the note off, let's think about what we need to do. 
I know that I need to pay, I'm going to have to go in and write a check for $10,250. $10,000 for the loan, $250 for the five months of interest. So I want to credit cash for $10,250. Now, out of that 10,250, I know that 10,000 of that is for the note payable. So I want to debit note payable for 10,000 to reduce that liability, take that off my books. Also, out of the interest, 100 of it is sitting up here in interest payable. So I want to debit that interest payable account for $100 to zero that account out to show, hey, I don't owe them any more interest. But debits have to equal credits. I'm still missing the last 150 from the past three months. That is going to go, remember, into that interest expense account. So that now interest expense is going to have the full $250 because remember I had originally debited it for $100 and now I'm debiting it for $150. Interest payable is zeroed out and notes payable is zeroed out as well. So here you can see over my, my chicken scratch here, you can see the, the other, the journal entry, just like we wrote out. So we've included interest expense, shows the last three months, and the interest payable is zeroed out from the first two months. Now, we may have a note payable that is a long-term note payable, but we are having to make monthly payments on it, and so a portion of it is due within the next year. So my mortgage is a 30-year mortgage. That's clearly a long-term note payable, but I have to make payments on it over the next year. So the portion that is due over the next year is classified as a current liability, and then the rest of it is classified as a long-term liability. So it's really split into two parts.